Welcome to the ROTC Scholarship Podcast, hosted by former Army ROTC Professor of Military Science, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Rob Kirkland. In these episodes, we explore how to best prepare yourself to obtain one of these valuable scholarships for those applicants who wish to attend a college or university and become officers in the military. The application process can be complex and confusing. This podcast works to make it more understandable. And now, the ROTC Scholarship Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the podcast uh, here today. Uh, What I want to talk about today is uh, questions that uh, oftentimes come up when I'm working with clients or, uh, you know, what I see in posting forums. It sees... uh, the main question there uh, that parents and uh, candidates ask is, is uh, so-and-so ROTC program a good program or not? Is it a highly ranked program or is it one of the best programs in the country? And uh, it's difficult to uh, answer this question um, because really uh, the ROTC is or at least how good an ROTC program is, is oftentimes based on the people that are there at the time. So, for example, cadre uh, that are at ROTC programs oftentimes uh, uh, are only there for about two or three years, are active duty officers, and they uh, make an impact while they're there, either good, mostly positive, but sometimes negative, and they then leave, and then someone else comes in. So oftentimes what I've seen with programs is a really good cadre or cadre members can come into a program and, you know, either turn it around or make it worse than it was uh, before or make it, you know, make a good program bad. And so uh, to base an ROTC program and to say what's an ROTC program is good or bad based on that criteria or, you know, to, to based on the personnel that are there, is really, I think, a flawed concept uh, in general. And I think that, you know, that, you know, even though, say, a program may be at a very uh, prestigious university, say, a uh, you know, UC Berkeley or a Notre Dame or a Duke, if the cadre members, senior cadre members there are not very good or are, you know, uh, just not engaged in the program, uh, it cannot be a good experience for somebody. And so, uh, so really it's, it's hard to say one program is a better program um, than another one or this program uh, outranks that one. So given that, uh, you know, I think my first piece of advice to you, to, to all of you would be, uh, to select a school or go to school based on, uh, how it fits for you outside of ROTC. Because remember when you're in ROTC, you're only going to be, uh, in the ROTC program for six hours a week uh, during the academic year. And so most of your time is going to be spent uh, outside of ROTC. So you just want to make sure that you, uh, you know, that you're not uh, basing it, basing your decision on, say, a cadre member or an experience that you've had there or whatever that is. It's you're going to a college or university based on the fit for you outside of ROTC, for example, academics, uh, extracurricular activities, uh, or whatever else you find that's important uh, when you attend a college, university, public, private, whatever is the best fit for you. And then bring into consideration the ROTC program. So that's really my first point there is go to the university based on the fit for you outside of ROTC rather than because of the ROTC program. So what I want to uh, do uh, for the remainder of this podcast is sort of talk about, let's just assume that uh, two two schools are equal or close to equal in your minds outside of ROTC. Uh, And, you know, you want to kind of get an idea of kind of if one ROTC program might be a better environment than another than another one. And I can, and I thought what I've done is I put together five to six considerations here that you should kind of think about. Uh, when determining whether or not an ROTC program is probably better um, than another one and may be a better experience for you. 
And so uh, let me sort of, I broke these down into the following categories. One is additional incentives a school provides for ROTC students. Two is condition of ROTC building and facilities. Three is extra support, uh, financial support given to ROTC by the school itself. The student body attitude towards ROTC on campus. And finally, the um, at university, finally the ROTC administration, civilian administ- administrators outside of the cat, the uniform cadre members that are permanent ROTC uh, administration at, on the campus. And I think if you you know go on to an ROTC program, you kind of use these criteria and kind of look around and kind of see things. I think you can get you know a a good idea sort of of uh, the experience you might have with the ROTC program um, on the campus. So again, so let's go through um, each of these uh, considerations, uh, and then uh, uh, and then you know then I'll talk about each one first. So the first one is um, additional incentives a school provides for ROTC students. So a lot of schools, uh, as I've mentioned in previous podcasts, provide uh, such incentives as room and board. Uh, first year tuition for three year uh, ROTC scholarships and other uh, non need financial uh, aid. Uh, I, I think that uh, this is a good indicator that the school's administration is supportive of ROTC. So you can say that they're indeed uh, sort of putting their money where their mouth is regarding uh, their support for ROTC. So they're making a conscious effort here, you know, with their own pocketbook to make the decision to support ROTC. So I think that's a good indicator, first of all, uh, of the support that you have for ROTC uh, on the campus is, you know, these kind of extra incentives that they might be able to provide. Now, these are oftentimes provided more at private schools than public schools. And some public schools with great ROTC programs may have their hands tied in this regard. Uh, So I wouldn't completely base my criteria on that. But it certainly is indica- indicative, certainly of private schools, uh, of maybe schools that are a little bit uh, more supportive of ROTC than other schools. The second uh, is is when you visit the ROTC campus, take a look at the condition of the ROTC buildings and facilities. So when you tour the campus, is the ROTC housed in newer buildings or housed in a rundown part of campus away from most students? Uh, so uh, I think this is an important consideration. You know, I've seen some ROTC programs where, you know, they're out by, you know, maintenance facilities out in, out in a kind of a uh, isolated part of campus with uh, no student traffic, no, uh, you know, that nobody knows that they're there. They, you know, the facilities are run down. There's really not uh, much uh you know, consideration given to ROTC. So ROTC is kind of given the worst facilities on the campus. And that's in, I think that indicates, you know, the priority that the college administration is giving to our, given to ROTC. On the other hand, you know, if you go to an ROTC and you see that it's, you know, in, on the main part of campus and in a well cupped up building, uh, that, uh, can, that certainly shows you that, uh, it's important to the college or university. I remember when I was at, uh, Claremont McKenna College uh, with the Army ROTC, we had our, uh, you know, we were right in the center of campus, right in uh, right in uh, a great, you know, right where the s- students had a lot of traffic. In addition, we even had our own pistol range on campus. So that, that you know, shows you kind of the support that uh, ROTC was given at that, at that college. Also, you know, are, are, do they have, do you have workout facilities? Do you have other you know, facilities that, that may be, you know, set aside for ROTC cadets on campus. So it shows you that really that, you know, again, about the funding that the university is making ROTC a centerpiece of their campus and, and it's important um, to them and, they, and that they value it. Along those lines is the third point about uh, extra financial support for ROTC. So normally with ROTCs, whether it's Army, Navy, or Air Force, um, the uh, service provides them a budget. And I can tell you from my experience in Army ROTC, that budget is limited. Uh, you know, it pays for um, very basic needs of the, of the cadets uh, outside of, 
you know, just uniforms and things like that. But it really doesn't give you a lot of money to do uh, additional um, activities such as dining ins or, um, or, you know, field trips or uh, picnics or other things, you know, that, that, you know, I think are kind of part of, uh, you know, building a strong uh, cadet program. Uh, so really what, you know, ROTC programs need is a little bit more from the university as far as a budget goes to kind of be able to kind of put their best foot forward uh, and be able to kind of provide these extra things for cadets, including, you know, things like just university providing furniture and, you know, updated furniture for the, uh, for the ROTC offices and to be able to kind of buy additional things that might not be provided on the service budget. So when you go on the campus, you just want to see, does the ROTC program kind of provide uh, those additional, um, you know, financial uh, support? Does it provide, you know, those, those kind, that kind of budget? Of, and, you know, and, and what is the uh, amount of the budget that's uh, provided? So that's, you know, I think, I think a very important consideration um, here. Uh, fourth or third, rather, is student body attitude. So this is really hard to gauge, uh, but some student bodies support ROTC and the military service more than others. Uh, ROTCs in general will conduct uh, attitude surveys uh, about uh, ROTC on the campus. A neutral or negative student body attitude can affect whether uh, someone enjoys ROTC on the campus or not. Uh, I think one indica indicator that I've seen as far as you know, ROTC is that you know when when you visit the campus, do does the ROTC um, cadets or midshipmen proudly wear the uniform even when not attending ROTC events or ROTC training? Are the kindy are they visible around campus uh, with their uniforms? If they're not, uh, that indicates that they're not proud of wearing their uniform and that that may be shunned on campus. Uh, so you definitely want to look for that. You know, you may pull a uh, uh, a cadet aside or uh, a uh, you know, and just ask them, you know, kind of what the student attitude is on the campus. Uh, you may also just talk to you know the random student on campus to see what their attitude may be of ROTC or whether whether or not they know uh, that the ROTC is uh, is on the campus itself. Um, so again, student body attitude is important because you know if the ROTC obviously is accepted. Uh, on the campus, then, uh, uh, then you know that can make for I think a more pleasant experience for uh, you know cadets that are part of the uh, ROTC program. And then finally, I would say uh, take a look at the unit, the, the civilian uh, administrators with ROTC. So though these administrators are the ones that are uh, there on uh, that will always be there for your four years that you're there in in ROTC. You know, when you're there for four years, starting out as a freshman, you're likely going to lose some cadre members along the way. And there's going to be, you know, good good and, and poor ones that come and go. But the university administration uh, and the civilian uh, administrators for ROTC, such as the recruiting officers, the administrative staff, uh, supply, et cetera, are going to be there for those four years. So are they uh, good folks? Are they attentive to you? Are they, uh, do they care about their job? Do they care about ROTC? You can kind of get an idea of this when you visit the program to, and to see kind of how responsive and receptive they are to you because those administrators are going to be there for that whole time. And so looking at that also, um, I think is a very, very important part of kind of being able to kind of, uh, determine whether or not an ROTC program is good is again, you know, uh, above average or below average. So again, to summarize, uh, you know, again, first is that you should pick the college or university based on the fit for you outside of ROTC. Keep in mind that ROTC is only uh, is only about six hours a week. So you're going to be doing most of your time outside of ROTC. So make sure it's a good fit for you outside of ROTC. Don't base it on the cadre because the cadre are going to uh, are going to move every couple of years. So you may, you know, uh, if, if, if you don't get a good impression of the cadre, that may change. So you shouldn't base your decision on the cadre. However, there are additional considerations that you may look at outside uh, if, if two programs are equal or close to equal. And again, these include condition of the ROTC, 
buildings and facilities, additional incentives a school provides to ROTC students, extra financial support to ROTC given by the university administration, the student body attitude towards Army ROT, towards ROTC in general, and then finally the civilian ROTC administrative personnel um, that are going to be part of your four-year experience uh, as a ROTC cadet or midshipman. Uh, so hopefully, uh, you know, this was kind of a short uh, uh, podcast here today, but, uh, you know, I get that this this question a lot about, you know, is this program good or is it that program good or is this, you know, is this, you know, what do you think of X program? And, and you really don't know until you get out of the campus. You really don't know until you kind of get all those things together that I kind of laid out here. And then that will give you a better idea of kind of, uh, of uh, you know, how to move forward and, and make the decision on where on where you want to attend school. But remember, first and foremost, you know, you're going to be a cadet for only part of your time, uh, a very small part of your time, actually, on the university campus. So choose the campus and where you attend school outside of uh, the considerations that I uh, talk about here with, um, with, with the ROTC. So I hope that uh, helps you and please, uh, you know, feel free to, you know, shoot me an email or, uh, uh, you know, or a comment uh, if you uh, have any, uh, any questions about what, what I laid out here. So take care. Thanks for listening to the ROTC Scholarship Podcast. If you like what we're doing, please leave a quick review. If you have any questions or want more information about ROTC or our consulting services, please visit our website at rotcconsulting.com. Take care, and we'll see you next time.